Hi there, I'm Buddha and you're watching Dr. Guitar, a show for all you guitarists out there. In today's episode, I'm giving you tips on how to get great guitar tone at home. Since the pandemic hit, I've been stuck at home, as a lot of you guys probably have been, and I was faced with a problem I'd never had, having a great, enjoyable guitar tone at home. What's the problem? What's usually the problem? The problem is that playing at home, you're not playing just with the amp, you're playing with your room. So playing in the bedroom, as I am in mine, is a huge challenge because guitar amps sound good at a higher volume or they need to be a little excited in order for the tubes to work. First of all, let me thank my dear patrons for supporting the channel. If you want to become a patron, just go to the link and follow the steps. It's super easy and you're helping the channel. You can also contribute to the tip jar if you like what I'm doing here and want to help and want to contribute. Feel free to contribute to the tip jar on PayPal. Very, very simple. If you're interested in guitar lessons with me, just send me an email or a direct message via Instagram or Facebook and we'll deal with it from there. Please visit myreverb.com store where I have some of the gear I review here in the show and I can't afford to keep it. It helps to keep the channel and helps me going on. Thank you so much. Let's go. Doctor guitar. So the first tip I'm giving you is treat your room. I did it on mine and it was just a huge improvement. How can you treat your room? It's not as complicated as it seems. I started by putting some carpet on the floor, then uh, putting some panels that I had in the studio. I brought the panels to my bedroom and put it on that side of the wall, so facing uh, back to me. So I'm usually working like this, because I'm here in the computer, and I'm working like this. I had two challenges to treat this room. One challenge, I need my guitar tone to be good, but then I'm also editing and mixing a lot of stuff here in the room. Not the final version, but at least I'm trying to make it as final as possible. And I needed to have a good sounding room to mix in. So I treated this, I treated the room thinking I'm in this position listening, because I'm playing here, I'm playing guitar here. Uh, so I'm listening here, I'm playing in this position, well, faced back because my computer is there. I teach here uh, my Skype lessons. I do it almost all the Skype lessons I do at home and I, I teach uh, facing the computer. So this is the spot I need to sound good. Why do I say that? Because you need a starting point. You need to know where do you want the room to sound at its best. And for me, it's exactly this. So I'm standing on a carpet, which immediately shaves off a little of the highs and a little of the reflections from the floor. I have my bed here, which also uh, changes the reflections. But then, second thing I needed to, to do was to treat the back wall, so the wall that is behind the camera, because the sound is going this way, hitting those walls and coming back to me. And that's reflection, that's reverb, that's loudness. The more the sound bounces back and forward in the room, the bigger it sounds. 
So you need to kill a little of the room ambience in order to get uh, a, a less loud room and it makes a huge difference. The third step was to cut the reflections from the sides. That's crucial and very important. I have it here because it's the first reflection point. How did I set this? I got my son to move a mirror uh, on, on this side of the wall and the minute I see this speaker reflected on that mirror over there, it's where the, um, the panel needs to go, the acoustic panel needs to go. So this panel here is exactly where I see sitting down here at this position. It's where I see the speaker appear at the first time. So it's the first reflection of the speaker. And this is treating the speakers. For the amps, I couldn't do it that way, but it helped immense. Then I had the same thing, a panel on that side. And I'm thinking on putting a panel over there on the wall too, because there's some reflection coming in from there. But for now, this is more than, than, than great. Then I have another panel over there. I, I just screwed it into the door and it's there because it's killing the reflections. And whenever I have the, that door open, this my bedroom door open it leads to the hallway of the rooms the bedrooms it's an immense reverb mess so i always mix and play with the door closed but then the huge huge difference is this cloud over here let me show you in the camera so i have a cloud there those panels are crucial to the sound because I'm not getting reflections from the ceiling. This is a simple way of treating your room with very inexpensive materials. How did I do my panels? Uh, I had it already from the studio and I have a second room in the studio that I treated way back but now I want it to be a little more reflective because I want to use that room as kind of a chamber or a more a lively room. And it's also my workshop, so I don't need that amount of uh, acoustic treatment. So I brought the panels from, from there and set them here. But it's really easy. You just build a frame of wood, like if you would build a painting frame. Then you put uh, fabric on one side. You put I, I used rock wool. If you're in the States, you have fiberglass, which is also very easy to work with. Just be careful and use gloves because it's... It sticks to the hands and it hurts, it cuts you a lot. Um, but I use rock wool inside and use rock wool with no other material because there's some rock wool with uh, paper and some rock wool with a metallic foil. That's not good because that doesn't absorb the, the tone. And just cover the back with fabric and they're on the wall, really easy. Each panel cost me around five to 10 euros most. So it's not a super expensive uh, thing to do in your room. It's not hard to do at all. It's kind of easy. Uh, let me know if you would like to, to see some DIY information of that, but there's a lot of uh, DIY tutorials in, in, in YouTube. And I just put them on the wall and good to go in incredible great sound until I treated my room I never had a great guitar tone in the room it was always too messy and because I I'm playing the amps to a certain point but then I'm hearing a lot of reflection it's always completely messed up tip number two get yourself some cool pedals to solve your problem what's the problem of playing at home you need to play quietly because you're playing in a smaller uh, space, you're not playing against a drum and a bass and another guitar player and a keyboard player. So you're not playing in the band context where everybody rises the volume up. You're playing by yourself, so you don't need the amount of volume that you need to play in a band. And that was my problem, because I know my settings, I have my pedals set up for 
a loud amp in a loud environment to cut through the mix. When I get home and play, it's like either terribly loud or terribly harsh and thin sounding. And I was like, man, this is probably what everybody complains about playing at home. How can pedals help you? Well, if you get certain type of pedals like overdrive, a booster, a clean boost, or um, a compressor of some sort, what they will all do is that they will compress your sound either uh, by pushing your, amp, pushing your amp harder, like the, the EP booster, for example, will be pushing your amp a little harder because it, it will be sending a little more signal to your amp, so the amp is compressing a little more. Or, uh, if you use a compressor, it will compress it in the pedal. Or, an overdrive will also compress it in the overdrive. <laughs> Great examples for overdrive will be the King of Tone or Walrus Ages, Yanis, Mias Nex. Always low overdrive pedals because you want kind of a cleanish sound out of the pedal, but with some excitement, like you if you were playing the amp really loud. You also have the Blossom Point by Surfy Industries, which exactly mimics that thing. I don't know if they had in mind to have the pedal to, to do that at a lower volume, but it's exactly what it does. Surfy Industries is a brand that, that produces uh, pedals and effects for surf music mainly, but they are way broader than that because you can use reverb in any other style, not just surf music. But uh, they, they produce it with the surf music scenario in mind. They say they produce the Blossom Point to use, for example, like when you have a basement in that sweet spot that is compressing, almost distorting, but not distorting. It's blossoming, it's, it's blooming, it's magical point of compression and satur almost saturation, harmonic excitement. And that makes it sound bigger than it actually is, louder than it actually is. So that pedal is also a cool thing. And by the way, thanks to Surfy Industries for sending me the pedal for this video.
I actually love this setting with the presence cut a little because usually playing home, you don't need the, the high treble. Compressor compresses the sound, makes it tighter and squishier, so it it, it is what a, what a real good tube amp does. When you push it, it compresses a little more, and you you feel like you play, and it gives a little. It it just it just not gives you back everything, so it kills a little of the transient. It gives you a, feel, a rubbery feel. It's more pleasing to to play. At a loud volume. I don't always use compressor, but at home it's a really cool idea.
third tip, use low powered amps. I have questions here in the channel, people commenting like, is the Lone Star a good amp for home use? Is the Marshall Super Bass a good amp for home use? Is the Mesa Boogie Royal Atlantic a, a good amp for home use? No, they aren't. Of course they are not. They are 100 watt amps. How could they be good for home use? They are meant to play stadiums and big venues. 100 watts of guitar is incredibly loud. And if you want to get that amp playing, you need to turn it up. Otherwise, it, it will sound wimpy. You will not take advantage of the amp that you own. The Lone Star can kind of be a cool amp for home use because the Lone Star has a 10 watt mode. So you can have a Lone Star and use it in 10 watt. It's kind of a super uh, misuse of such a great amp because it doesn't sound the same at all. It doesn't sound as good in 10 watts as it sounds in 50 or in 100. And it's a, an extremely expensive amp, but if you want to buy one, go ahead. For home use, I would recommend something like uh, the Blues Junior is a classic, the Pro Junior, if you don't like the reverb, it's also cool, but the Pro Junior has a uh, downside to it, because the volume knob on the Pro Junior starts working at 4, and 4 is loud as hell for home use. So, the Blues Junior having the master volume and the gain, you can really set the compression of the amp and tame the volume at the same time. I think the Blues Junior is a no-brainer, and by the way, there's links in the description, they are affiliate links, so if you buy from there, Amazon will give me a small commission and I thank you in advance. A great, great amp that I've been enjoying a lot playing is the Harley Benton 215, or the Mono Price, it's the same amp. I changed the speaker to an ET65 by Warehouse Speakers, and I'm trying to get Tommen to give me uh, another Harley Benton amp, a 215, because I'm, I'm thinking about changing the speaker to either a Creamback or a Greenback Celestian in the other, uh, in, the, in that new 215, and played stereo, because it, it would sound really good. That amp has 1 watt option and 15 watts, but it's kind of a, a distorted amp, it's not a clean amp, so it gets in the zone really easy at quiet volumes. So it's also a great option and very affordable. You can buy the mono price and change the speaker. I would advise to change the speaker, because I, I didn't really like the, the 7080 or the, the Celestion that comes in. It's really crappy sounding to me. Uh, but with a good speaker that costs you like 100 uh, euros, I will, I will add links in the description, also affiliate links, so if you buy from there, Amazon will give me a uh, commission and it helps a lot. But uh, either the Celestian Greenback or the Greenback, for home use I would even go for the Greenback because it's a 25 watt uh, speaker and it means the speaker will compress a little also, so it help you taming the volume. If you want more headroom and a louder amp, you just buy a m more powerful speaker, like a, the ET65 is 65 watts or the Creamback is 60 watts. So it is more efficient and compresses less, which for home use, I think it's the opposite you're looking for. And those kits, those uh, DIY kits for Tweed Fender amps, I think they would also be really great. The 1 watt or the 12 watts would be really great. But look at low-powered amps, like the Princeton Reverb would also be a good option. And if you want the Princeton Reverb, I would advise the 68 Custom. I like it better than the, the regular black-faced one. There's links in the description for that too, affiliate links, of course. And for the last tip, play stereo. If you can afford to play stereo at home, as I advise you already to buy the Mono Price or the 215 by Harley Benton, the same amp. Those amps are really cool and sound really great. If you can afford two of those amps with two speakers, as I'm pretending to, as I'm wishing to, to do uh, in the future, 
like having one with a Celestian ET with a um, Celestian cream back or green back. I would go for the green back, the 25 watts. And the other with the warehouse speaker ET65 or a cleaner American voiced sounding speaker. You would have really complementary tones uh, to play with. And playing stereo gives you a huge uh, 3D spectrum, a huge uh, image, and a big, big, big sound. Two quiet amps sound louder than one loud amp. It's just strange. I don't know why. I play live. I play my super amps, and I play it... Uh, I played them in stereo, I played a tremolo verb and a thunderbolt, and they are, when you just turn one of the amps, they are really quiet. But when you get them together, they are loud enough to compete with drums and bass, but they are not killing uh, with volume, they are just filling more space. And this is exactly the set that I came uh, to this tape. I'm playing my two Mesa Boogies Transatlantic, the TA-15 on this side and the TA-30 on that side. They are really quiet, so I have them set at uh, 10 o'clock, master volume at 10 o'clock on both 15 watts. Yeah, 15 watts on both and clean channel, but kind of pushing the gain a little, so the gain is uh, at one and a half one o'clock, between one o'clock and two o'clock, so it's kind of already compressing, but the two amps together sound enormous, and when I put like the flint reverb going to both amps, or the Walrus D1 Mecco going into both amps, it sounds just glorious. <laughs> home I'm also using the Surfy Industries vibrato going just to the TA15 which makes the amp go the amps go completely stereo incredible stereo and I'm playing quite uh, at a at a very conservative level I'm not playing loud but I'm feeling great for the first time in one year playing at home
As I told you, before the pandemic hit at home, I would play like this. This is how I would play. I would play unplugged. Because I usually, <laughs> when, when the world was normal, I played four or five times a week. So at home, I didn't need the amps. I just... I was writing or studying or practicing, whatever. So I, I would only play the guitar to get, to play guitar, not to get a big tone. But playing at home and not playing live for such a long time made me want to play with good tone because uh, it's, it's very uh, sad to not be able to play with, with great tone. And this was the way I, Finally, I'm finally set with a really cool setup at home by treating my room by playing two low-powered amps in stereo and using some pedals to enhance my tone when I want it at low volume, so not depending on the volume of the amp to get compression and distortion. Well, that's it. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you have liked the episode. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to become a patron and support the channel, just go to the link. It's super easy. and Follow the steps. You can also support the channel by contributing to the tip jar and donating whatever you want. I thank you in advance. If you're interested in guitar lessons with me, just send me an email or a direct message via Instagram or Facebook and we'll deal with it from there. Also, please visit myreverb.com store where I have some gear that I review here in the show and I can't afford to keep. It also helps keeping the channel going on. Thank you so much. We'll see each other next week. Bye-bye.